Kalos. So just I'll give a little bit of a, a bit more of a bio of Alice. Um, so Alice, uh, Alice is a teacher and a zero waster and she experienced her like I, I suppose your road to Damascus experience Alice your ecological conversion if you described it after reading the papal encyclical Laudio Laudio Laudato Si Laudato Si yes Laudato Si in Lent in 2018 so she gave up 40 things for Lent and decided to reduce her waste and she hasn't stopped since um, she has her own um, uh, what are we going to call it? Facebook page and um, and probably soon to be small business over, overturn the tables. So maybe we'll get you to explain that, Alice, and to explain your journey and I suppose how we can live the change with, through how we eat and how we deal with the waste that we have with that. Yeah, so thank you so much, Andrew, for having me uh, speak with you all today. Uh, so yeah, I, my name's Alice, I'm a teacher. Um, I work at Carmel College at Thornlands um, here in Brisbane. Um, but when I'm not teaching, because I'm only part-time this year, I help schools um, and parishes and I go around to, uh, within my sort of Catholic diocese, um, I go around to them and I help them to journey on their own path to ecological conversion. So in 2018, um, during the period of Lent, I had my own ecological conversion. And it started, the process I suppose started when uh, Laudato Si came out in 2015. So the document Laudato Si, I recommend you read it. It is a fantastic document. It's very lengthy. Uh, my mum sent me the link in an email uh, while I was at uni. Um, I was on uni holidays when it came out. She sent it to me and I sat and I read it from start to finish. And the whole document really just encapsulated my entire faith uh, in everything, in all the words that it had and everything that it said. Um, it was really just how I wanted to express my faith as a young person. So in 2018, I was thinking about Lent and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And by the um, just before I decided, okay, well, how about we try and go zero waste in that time? How about I give up my rubbish bin? And I sat down and I wrote 40 things, I just read a list of 40 things that I could give up or change um, to be able to transition to zero waste. As I went through Lent, I, uh, face, I sort of wrote Facebook posts as a reflection on, on my journey to sort of help me to process uh, the change that I was going through. And the 40 things that, um, hap the 40 things that I did uh, quickly turned into 100 things. Uh, so even, for example, um, some of the things that I do now, like I just had before, I've just been playing with it. I've got my, this is my hair tie uh, that I use to tie up my hair, but it is actually, it's not just a generic hair tie. Um, it was an old um, stocking that I used to have and it's just been uh, scrunched up and it's the best hair tie I've ever had. Uh, but that type of thinking, that reusing thinking and um, all those sorts of things really changed uh, during that period of Lent for me. After that time, um, I sort of was sharing my journey with some, with some other teachers and some other groups um, from schools. And they all said to me, look, we really like the way that you share your thinking, which I'm about to share with you. And as a result of that, I decided to create Overturn the Tables, uh, which is my website and Facebook page um, and my small business that um, sort of accompanies that. And the story of Overturn the Tables is actually from scripture. So in um, the chapter of Mark where, well, it appears in more than one gospel, but I prefer the Mark version, um, where Jesus uh, enters into the temple and he throws over the tables of all the money changers. And in that moment, uh, what Jesus is doing is he's ultimately going in there and changing culture. He's going into the temple and saying, this is not what the culture is that God wants in this place. We need to change this. Um, so he basically causes a massive ruckus and ultimately gets executed as a result of that. Um, and I try not to get executed <laughs> as a result of what I'm doing, but um, that's where the story comes from. When I heard that story in Lent, we were doing a biblical reflection on it. I realised that that's what God was doing in my life. I went, okay, that's, that's what's happening is that uh, I, I am turning over everything in my head Everything in my heart is being completely converted and changing into something else um, as a result of that. And the way that I think of things has really changed. 
so in the process of Lent, like I was really sort of, I started off with a reduce, reuse, recycle sort of framework uh, that we had that, you, you know, you sort of have when you start off um, trying to reduce your impact in terms of reducing waste. Uh, but when, when I looked further into the zero waste idea, it was really all encompassing. It's not just about the rubbish that I'm trying not to put in the bin. It's about the energy that I use. It's about the water that I use. It's about the food that I eat. It's about the clothes that I buy. It's about every single choice that I make has some sort of purpose um, based on that. And this is the framework that I sort of use now. It's a very fluid framework. Uh, to be able to help me to make decisions about everything in my life. So even down to my hair tie, for example. So I'll talk you through the hair tie because it's here as well. So for example, uh, when I'm interacting with an object, so if I have to go and purchase an item um, or if I have run out of something in my cupboard and I need to go and get something or something breaks, this is what I think about. Can I refuse the item that's in front of me? So for example, um, at teacher professional development, they always have Mentos, like the little packets of Mentos with the plastic around them, which are just awful. Um, so whenever they have them there, I just don't consume them because I don't need them. They normally, we already have lunch and all that sort of stuff provided anyway. Why would I need the little pack of Mentos, uh, which is just there to keep people entertained for a short time? So I refuse that sort of stuff. I reduce the amount of electronics, the amount of homewares, the amount of clothes that I buy just to what's necessary. Uh, so I don't try to, I try to be sober in my lifestyle. I try to um, not consume as much as what I need, try not to be material. I then reuse things. So for example, like the, the sort of, I suppose, token um, zero waste thing is a reusable coffee cup. I don't drink coffee. So the, my reusable coffee cup doesn't actually get used that much, but the, my reusable water bottle does. I have makeup wipes that I reuse all the time, those types of things. If I need to purchase something um, from that's food based, I try to refill things. So I'm very lucky that I live in an area that has a bulk food shop where I can go um, to get all my pantry goods. So we have source foods here um, at Springfield, which is just down the road. So I can take a jar um, and if I only need a cup of flour, I'll go there, I'll get my cup of flour in my jar. They'll weigh the jar and only charge me for the flour that I buy, uh, which is fantastic. And I do that for the butcher as well. In the COVID world at the moment, that has been a little bit more of a challenge uh, because they aren't accepting certain things um, due to hygiene and all that sort of stuff. But generally speaking, they're pretty okay and they're pretty good with those types of things. When it comes to so the other end of the spectrum, when it comes to uh, getting rid of the waste that I have, so if I can compost something, that is the first thing that I will do. After I have um, you know, eaten you know, an apple or something like that, it goes straight into the compost unless I have some sort of use for it, like orange rinds. I tend to use oranges to make cleaning products. So I'll use those first and then the rest will go into compost. If for some reason I have to buy something um, that I, can, I can't ha have in any other way, I will try and get it in cardboard, tin or glass. Um, so coconut milk, for example, uh, my husband really likes curry. So we, we tend to get coconut milk in a tin. Uh, because that's uh, one of the only ways that we can do it unless I want to spend about 10 hours making my own coconut milk, which I don't really have the time to do. Other than that, so um, some other items I will get secondhand. I will try always to buy local. Um, so making sure that I go to the local fruit and veggie shop, the local butcher. I will buy things that aren't wrapped in plastic, so package free. So in relation to like just the ones that we have there on the screen, when I'm thinking about my hair tie, okay, so I got to a point where I've been growing out my hair and it's now long enough that it's an inconvenient thing to have it long and I need to tie it back. I didn't want to buy any hair ties because I didn't think that, like I don't like the fact that they come in plastic packaging, so I would prefer if they could be package free. I don't like the fact that they use elastic in them because they because elastic is another type of plastic that doesn't break down very well. Um, so ultimately I need to think of another way of doing things. Luckily I had some old socks, uh, some old stocking socks that had got holes in them and all those sorts of things. So I found a way to reuse them by cutting them up and hence I now have a hair tie. It's actually one of the best ones that I've ever had in my entire life, I must say. So that's, that's how my thinking works is if I look at an object, I think about all these things and see where I can make it uh, fit or work 
uh, for me. Sometimes there is no alternative and that's just the reality. There's some things that um, I can't change and that's okay. But where I can, um, I will try and do these things. Um, Andrew, can I please go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So uh, some of the other, the other remaining things where I can, I'll buy things in bulk in terms of cleaning products uh, as well as the pantry things. So a lot of my cleaning products, which you know, we need to have because of hygiene, um, I'll buy those um, in bulk because that's a better alternative. Where I can, I will make um, items. So yogurt, cosmetics, uh, baking, peanut butter, gin, like all of those sorts of things I tend to make by myself. And then uh, where I can as well, I will, I will grow um, my own fruit and vegetables and those types of things. So that's some of the thinking framework. This thing though, so this, oh, hang on, can we go back one? Oh dear, what have we yet? What have we done? There we go. So the, when I'm looking at an object, okay, I'm always thinking about uh, like whether it's food or, or some item that I, that I need to get, I think about, okay, well, where does this item come from? So if I'm thinking about my hair tie, the, the place that it will come from is normally some sort of um, bulk manufacturer, um, possibly something uh, maybe that's not fair trade and all this sort of stuff. So it's come from a place where they've had to refine oil to be able to make the plastic um, things that are in the hair ties, right? My hair tie is then used over and over and over again to be able to tie up my hair. After a hair tie is used like a million times, it gets to a point where it just can't be used anymore. So there's nothing that it can be used for after that. And then its life will always end up in landfill. There's really no other place that a hair tie can go um, after a certain point. So in landfill, you know, it's going to sit there for thousands of years um, and it's not going to be doing much. So when I was thinking about this, I didn't like where it was coming from, so I didn't go and buy hair ties. I tried to find an alternative solution. I can't change what it's being used for. I have to tie up my hair and there's not much that, like, you know, I can use ribbons and all those sorts of things, but nothing is quite as effective. So I looked at, okay, well, what are some other things that I could use instead um, to be able to, to make my hair tie? And that's where I came up with the sock idea. And eventually this will probably get worn down to a point where I can't use it anymore, but it's ultimately been a sock that has been used thousands of times already in my feet um, and then I've washed it and then it will be used another thousand or so times in my hair. So the life has extended um, and it means that I haven't had to purchase and buy some other things. The, the point I really want to make tonight is that when we, um, when we make our choices about the objects that we interact with, so the things that we buy, the food that we eat, um, the clothing that we wear, uh, the items that we you know, ultimately work with in our daily life, Every time that we make a choice about those things, we are sending a message to someone else. So whether the, um, the person uh, that's manufacturing them or whether it's the company that is selling them, we are sending a message that we value the product that's there um, and we want to engage with that in some way. So if we don't like, for example, I don't like the way that hair ties are manufactured. I don't like the way that they are packaged um, in little plastic bags and all of those sorts of things. I don't like that because it, it's not a very good use of our Earth's resources. So I'm going to change my habits to be able to better reflect um, the things that I value. So that's really what I sort of, what I'm about and that's what I do and that's what zero waste uh, really means to me is thinking about the resources that our Earth has, our finite resources that we have and being able to adapt my habits and being able to adapt my thinking to be able to help that in the best way instead of harming it. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me about what's the go. <laughs>